Good morning, everyone. Good morning. So I'm gonna go ahead and I think I'll go ahead and read the uh, the opening here. And then before we get started, I wanna, uh, I, look, I see some new faces here. So I'd like to go around and see what's going on with that. So I'll start with the opening and, and we'll go from there. Um, so as a, well, it doesn't matter. All right, so good morning. You're attending the Animal Matters Commission hearings for February 7th, 2022. The Animal Matters Commission was established and is conducted in accordance with Article 12 of the Anne Arundel County Code. These are administrative hearings and by nature they are informal, which means you are not hampered by rules of evidence. However, please be aware that you are still testifying under oath. Each party will have their opportunity to state their case. After each party states their case, they will have an opportunity to ask questions of the other party. Please do not interrupt the other party. You will be, giving ample, you will be given ample time to talk. In many cases, we are aware that there is a history. You may briefly tell the commission about that history. However, please and after each case, the commission will have open deliberations. During these deliberations, the public may not participate. If the commissioners have an additional question, you may answer that question. No further information will be heard and a decision will be rendered. This decision is a recommendation or her representative. The recommendation of the commission will be taken into consideration and final decision will be made by the chief of police or her designated representative. If the defendant in the, if as the defendant in the case, you are unhappy with the decision of the commission, you may appeal for citation cases. Appeals are made through the district court of Maryland for administrative orders, potentially dangerous, dangerous or vicious orders. Appeals are made through the county board of appeals. So with that being said, before we call our first case, how's everybody doing this morning? Um, I see uh, Officer McFarland. Uh, Will this be your first time attending one of these commission hearings? Hey, good morning, everyone. Yes, this is my first time I'm taking over for uh, Lieutenant Ravenel. I am uh, new to this position. Um, so any information you could share will be helpful. Okay. All right. So, um, welcome. And you know, like I said, we can kind of just get the feel for how the, how the flow, all this goes. Um, we'll move into, into the cases here in a minute. Uh, Ms. Hillman, are you also a new commissioner? No apologies. I was asked to appear on behalf of the animal control this morning. Okay. All right. Yeah. We, 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 I know that we, we were awaiting uh, a new commissioner at some point. So I, I just, I, saw okay. face that I wanted to, to reach out. Um, so, at the end of the last meeting, I discussed, you know, right now I'm acting as chairperson, which I don't mind doing for a short term. Um, after speaking with my supervisor, he really, you know, and I agree with him, I don't believe that the health department should be chairing this, this committee. So I don't know if you guys have any thoughts as to, you know, potential chairs. I, I kind of like to see, my personal opinion is I'd like to see a full commission before we vote um, on a chairperson. Um, I know Ed has seniority. I don't know how much longer Ed's time will be with us. Um, I believe Jennifer and Matt both capable and, and have a longer period of time with us. So I believe that's fine. Um, I don't believe the police or generally speaking, the police or, or the health department especially should, should take that role. That's my personal opinion and also the opinion of my superiors. So as for today, I don't know if you guys have any questions or you know any input on that before we get started. So we're, go ahead. Uh, Matthew and Ed and I, are we the only community member Right now, the yes. right now yes and i believe that we would have a veterinarian you know we're, we're without a veterinarian right now and you know i know in the last case um Mr. dr chibalco you know took that position i know in other you know previous you know um committees we've had you know the, the veterinarians also kind of taken the role that you know they as a they, they kind of see themselves more as um like the health department or the police than a citizen member so um, I don't know if anyone here would, would be interested in it, but I, you know, like I said, I don't mind chairing today. Um, I don't know if we, you know, speaking, I don't really know how long it's going to be before we get another member. So I don't know if it'd be worth voting today if anyone's interested. Um, like I said, I'm willing to hear what you guys have to say about it. I'm willing to wait till we get a full commission. If so, I'm also fine with Ed. Um, I mean, Jennifer, do you have any thoughts? No, I'm I'm okay with that too. I, I'm. I was just curious if there was anyone, you know, uh, on the horizon if we were getting more, um, 
getting more members. I don't know if Phil. Would yeah, know. I, I think that the person that's in charge of doing that is is doing their best to get us get the positions filled. I think that they're they've got a pretty full boat too. So I, you know, I think as long as we have our the numbers we have here today, I, I think we should be fine. Um, I think when it just comes down to some specific administrative things, it shouldn't be coming from a, a government body per se. Um, as far as like little little things that come up, but Ed, what do you have to say about it? Um, I can I consulted with Robin and um, I believe and Robin can correct me if I'm wrong um, I think I'll be here until June of 23 okay that's good to know so yeah, I, I, I don't sometimes you know I'm here on and off kind of until I leave you know leave this position so it's kind of uh you know I, I like to see someone who chairs this committee to be someone who's here and, and with us for at least a year would be good so that sounds like you, you could be here for that long so um, you know, I, I think let's hold off until next month, I guess. I don't know. I, I think with, with, uh, Optum Barlin here, let him get through a, a time. Right? Unless you guys want to vote, you know, put a vote now. I'd be fine with voting now. I just feel like officer McFarland would be at a vote. He's not really sure what exactly is going on here. I'm fine either way. We would it defer <laughs> to next month. Is that okay with everyone? Yeah, we have a pretty large docket this morning. I kind of would want to get started. <laughs> That's fine. Yeah, yeah, I didn't want to jump into it as well. You, and I wanted to are you going to be here next? Are you going to be here next month, Tom? I would hope so. Yeah. I mean, okay. As long as you're going to chair it. next month, that's fine. Yeah, I can definitely get squared away. I, I, I have planned to be. I don't, I don't see any reason why not right now. Okay. Being said, um, Phil, before we get going here, one last thing. I know it is a large docket. Has anything changed with? I went out and looked at some of the paperwork earlier, and I did couldn't find anything under one of the animal control cases. So the, um, the updated agenda is in the shared file. Um, I think Ed does have it updated. There were two cases which postponed. Um, so currently, as it stands, we've got animal care and control versus Emily McCarty, animal care and control versus Tanzania Sheffy, Susan William versus Edmund McNulty, and Craig Lucy versus Christopher Burnham. Okay. Because, yeah, I went through one. Uh, when I went through this morning, I found um, the dangerous order with all the paperwork was there. But when I tried to click into the other um the other animal control case i couldn't find any information there let me double check uh does anybody else have that problem which case is that tom I'm looking now not the do but not the one that's uh that's yeah from mccarty's in there uh Sheffy. oh Sheffy. no worries i got it right here oh, that's odd. yeah there's nothing in the folder <laughs> okay yeah i saw that it was just i just want to make sure before we got started that all that paperwork was going to be there for us to be able to look through Absolutely. But with that being said, if you want to get that going and kind of behind the scenes, if you want to call the first case, we can get started while you're working on getting that up. Unless that was going to be the first case. I think that was the first case, was it not? That's the second case. Yeah. Oh, okay. And it should be there now. So, uh, okay, cool. Get the first one called here. Thank you, guys. I appreciate the time this morning. I know we've got a long morning. So the first case we have is Animal Care and Control versus Emily McCarty. All parties who have an interest in this case who wish to testify may now come forward to take the oath. Please utilize Zoom's raise hand feature. I'll get you headed in one by one and then sworn in all together at the end. Party here, Officer Herbert. Officer Herbert, can you hear me? Yes. Perfection. If you would please state your name and address for the record. Officer Herbert, 411 Maxwell Fry Road, Millersville, Maryland, 21108. Thank you kindly. Hang out for just a moment. Ms. McCarty, if you would please unmute. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Perfection. If you would please state your name and address for the record. Emily McCarty, 7985 Long Hill Road. Thank you kindly. Is the individual with you also preparing to testify? Yes. yes. All right. If you would please also state your name and address for the record. If we could swing the camera to view them. Thank you. What is that? Oh, here's one. I'm sorry. I'm Patty McCarty. Um, I live at 7985 Long Hill Road. It's my house. Thank you, guys. 
I'm Janet McCarty. I'm Emily's mother. I'm here a couple times a week at 795 uh, Long Hill Road. Thank you very much. Hang out for just one second. I'll get you all sworn in at the end. Uh, we've got, um, let's see, I'm missing one individual from the list here. I'll reach out to them in just a moment. We've got Ms. Hillman has your hand up. Ms. Hillman, if you would unmute. Um, you're, you're in reference to the cases involving the horses, correct? Correct. All right, so that'll be the second case called. I, I noticed your hand was up. I didn't know if that was for this or no worries. So we'll get that in just one second there. Let me reach out. Let's see, we're missing Mr. Sorto. Um, you? Yes. Are you guys waiting for me? No, ma'am. They're trying to add someone else here to the to the Zoom. All right. I do have him on the line. He is looking to appear. We're just dealing with some technical issues. Beg your indulgences, we'll be right there. All righty, perfect. He is on his way in now. He's got the link and connecting. Ah, technology when it works. I think we'll give him a couple minutes here and then I'm just gonna let Kristen get started and then uh, we'll give him like maybe another two minutes, let Kristen get started. And then if he chimes in and he, then, then he comes in, but I mean, Kristen's here to present her case. I'll, I'm gonna give him just another minute or two. Like, there we go. 
a, a long morning here. If after we get started, he, he comes in, we can just go ahead and you know swear him in when we get a, a minute. There we go. We've got him joined in. Uh, Robin, if you could re-enable my co-host permissions now that you have control, I can get him added up. Thank you kindly. And let's bring Mr. Sorto up. Morning, sir. If you would, uh, if you can hear me, start up your video and send your pop up there. Mr. Sorto, can you hear me? Oh, I've got video. It looks like you're muted. If you would unmute. Can you hear me okay? Hear hey, yes, there we good go. Morning. Good morning, sir. If you would please state your name and full address for the record. Uh, my name is Savio Sorto. I live in 208 Longfield Court, Pasadena, Maryland, 21122. Thank you kindly. And I'll get everybody sworn in now. If you would be sure to unmute. I'll need an affirmative at the end of the oath. And if we could, um, on Ms. McCarty's end, just cluster everybody in so I can see everybody's right hand. And... All right, perfect. So if everyone would, raise your right hand. Officer Herbert, you as well, please. Thank you. And do you declare and affirm under the penalties of perjury the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yeah. All righty. Thank you all kindly. We are good to proceed. If you would please remain muted unless called upon to testify. And we're good. All right. Kristen, you ready to ready to go? Officer Herbert, you're muted. Morning, everyone. Can you hear me now? Yes, ma'am. Thank you for your time. Yep. Please present your case. On Wednesday, December 15th, 2021, Anne Arundel County Animal Care and Control's Public Safety Department received a human exposure report via call taker 3138 of police communications from Avier Sorto of 208 Long Hill Road, Pasadena, Maryland, 21122, advising of a dog bite that occurred on December 14th, 2021 from a dog running at large. A history check for the address listed on the exposure report for the suspect dog owner at 7985. Long Hill Road, Pasadena, Maryland, 21122, was performed in both the Animal Care and Controls uh, system as well as Police CAD system with the following results. Uh, in the Police CAD system, there was nothing animal related. Um, however, in the Animal Care and Control system, we have three dogs listed at 7985 Long Hill Road. Charlie is a golden retriever, spayed female, golden color, approximately five years old current on rabies vaccine and county license owned by Patricia McCarty Haslam. Uh, there was no public safety history reported under that dog. 
Next dog is Sophie, a rough-coated collie, spayed female, black and white in color, five years old, current on rabies vaccine and county license, owned by Patricia McCarty Haslam. Uh, no public safety history was reported for that dog. The third dog is Henny, a pit bull type mix, spayed female, tan and white in color, approximately three years old, owned by Emily McCarty of the address of 7985 Long Hill Road, Pasadena, 21122. Uh, this animal has a dangerous order listed that was issued June 22 of 2021. Uh, Ms. McCarty did not appeal that or order. She complied um, and was in compliance and inspection. Penny is current with a rabies vaccine and county license. Uh, history showing multiple public safety violations. A warning letter was issued February 4th of 2021. The dangerous order was issued May 6th, 2021 on the current human exposure that occurred on December 14th, 2021. I, Officer Herbert, on the same day upon speaking to the suspect dog owner's family member that was present at the time of the incident, Patricia McCarty, and the dog bite victim, Javier Sorto, obtained statements of fact from both parties and photographs of Mr. Sorto's severe dog bite wounds to his lower left leg. Medical records from Mr. Sorto requested from both Hall Washington Medical Center through the Anne Arundel County Health Department on December 15th, 2021. Medical records advise that Mr. Sorico sustained four wounds from a dog bite, medial two wounds over proximal shin, each around one centimeter, and the more inferior wound gaping. The lateral calf was also two wounds, each around a half a centimeter, in the superior wound, triangular shaped and gaping, requiring three sutures to repair. On December, sorry, wrong page. I received Mr. Sorto's statement on 1214 21 around 3 p.m. I was running on Long Hill Road, which is my usual running route. Never had an issue here. Then suddenly, when I pass 7985 Long Hill Road, I see a dog out of my peripheral running towards me and immediately bit my leg. The dog that bit me when I was running on the road, it was a big dog and yellow. I tried to get away, but the dog was too fast and everything happened very quick. I did not do anything that would have caused the dog to bite me. I was just jogging on the road. Once it bit me, I yelled to the guy outside to get his dog. I'm not sure if he got the dog or the dog just went inside the house on its own. I was more worried about my leg at that point as it was hurting a lot and bleeding a lot. Then the guy, an older lady, and a kid came out to ask if I was okay and to offer help. At that point, I had already called 911 and asked for an ambulance to stop the bleeding. The guy took the kid into the house and the lady stayed with me outside. Told me it was her dog and provided me with all the dog's information. The lady identified herself as Patricia McCarthy. Phone of 443-831-1858. Once the ambulance arrived, I was bandaged up and told to go to the hospital. I went to Baltimore Washington Medical Center ER, and they gave me an x-ray to make sure the bite didn't damage my tibia, three stitches, antibiotics, and a shot of tetanus. The dog was rabies vaccinated, so I did not have to receive the rabies vaccine. I also received a statement from Ms. McCarty advising Yesterday, while outside with my Charlie, my golden retriever, a young man ran down the road close to me and Charlie went after him, biting him on the leg. I believe Charlie thought I needed his protection. She is not a violent dog. The paramedics were called and I gave the young man all of my information and the vaccine information for the dog. I will quarantine Charlie in the home until Christmas Eve. On December 16th, 2021, I officer Herbert reached out to the victim, Mr. Sorto, to ask him to describe the dog again that bit him on December 14th, as I had knowledge of history with another dog, which I did not describe to Mr. Sorto, on the same property of 7985 Long Hill Road, Pasadena. Mr. Sorto admitted he was not initially forthcoming in identifying the dog that bit him and described the dog that bit him as a tan or light brown small pit bull reasoning that he used to have a pit bull and know how loyal these animals can be. Mr. Sorto then redacted his prior statement and submitted an additional statement, which follows 
following our conversation today, the dog that bit my leg on 7985 Long Hill Road on 1214-21 was a tan or light brown small pit bull. Right after the pit bull bit me, two more dogs came towards me, but they did not bite me or act in an aggressive manner. One dog was a golden retriever and the other dog some kind of collie. I still don't know where from the property the pit bull came from, but I'm assuming it was the front door. Like I said, I caught it out of the corner of my eye when it was about to bite me. Right after that, someone took the pit bull inside. Don't know who it was or if it just went inside on its own. Then the guy, kid, and lady were asking me if I was okay. When the guy took the kid inside, the, light, the lady cried and begged me not to blame the pit bull and blame her other dog instead. I fell for this as I used to have a pit bull and know how loyal these animals can be. But after learning that the pit bull had its history, I can't let this happen to someone else. She also gave me the vet paperwork for all of her dogs. I think the pit bull belongs to her daughter. I will send you a copy of the paperwork as well. I am sorry for all this. I did not ask this to happen. On um, December 16th, I made several attempts to contact Henny's owner, Emily McCarty, by phone and email with negative results. I then contacted Ms. Patricia McCarty who advised that under Anne Arundel County Code, Article 12, 4, 402A, 1, 2, 4, and 6, under public safety, and Article 12, 4, 9, 5, animals running at large, due to the severity of the injuries to the victim, as well as the violation of a dangerous order, her dog, Henny, must complete the 10-day quarantine period at animal care and control, as well as during the investigation into the incident that occurred on December 14, 2021. On December 16th, 2021, Alexis McCarty, sister to Emily McCarty, brought Henny, 80, animal data sheet number 277538, to animal care and control as a mandatory impound under public safety without incident and advised that Henny was to be claimed. On December 17th, 2021, after a thorough investigation and review of the file, including consideration of the animal's demeanor, prior history, and evidence of mitigating circumstances, and on the County Animal Care and Control found that in accordance with 12-4-402D of the Anaranda County Code, Henny acted in a vicious manner and cannot be safely maintained without threatening members of the public. On December 20th, 2021, Officer Simpson sent the vicious order and appeal form via email to Emily McCarty for signature and return with negative results. Officer Simpson resent the email on December 21st as Ms. McCarthy advised she had not received it. On December 22nd, 2021, Officer Simpson responded to Ms. McCarthy's residence at 7985 Long Hill Road in Pasadena, service call 1772167, to issue the vicious order and posted the property with the order and took a photo of it. Ms. McCarthy then submitted her signed order and appeal form on December 23rd, 2021, and was scheduled for the January 3rd, 2022 Animals Matter Commission hearing. On December 29th, 2022, Animal Care and Control Officer Herbert was advised by the victim, Mr. Sorto, that he would be unavailable for the January 3rd hearing, but he would be available for the February 7th, 2022 hearing date, which was granted and all parties were contacted to advise of the change in the hearing date. Penny is currently in the care and custody of Anne Arundel County Animal Care and Control at 411 Maxwell Fry Road, Millersville, Maryland, 21108, which brings us to this animal's matter hearing today, February 7th, 2022. All the aforementioned events occurred in Anne Arundel County, Maryland. Thank you, Officer Herbert. I appreciate that. Um, commissioners, does anyone have any questions of Officer Herbert? Yes, I do, uh, Don. Um, Officer Herbert, did the warning letter and the previous uh, dangerous order, uh, did they result in um, bites to humans as well? Yes. Thank you. Any other questions for Officer Herbert? Okay. Mr. Sorto, uh, you heard Officer Herbert's testimony, correct? Yes. Did, do you, uh, I mean, feel free to speak freely about it, but I mean, she gave your statement as everything she read true. I mean, you can, you can kind of give us your side of the story if you like. Uh, yes, everything Officer Herbert said is correct. Uh, I was just jogging on the side of the road, like I always do, and this dog just came out of my right side, which is where they live, and it just, it just bit me. Like, no, I wasn't doing anything. I was just jogging, and 
uh, bit me. Then I went to the house. The lady came out, and she told me not to blame uh, the pit bull, and then provided me with all the information for her other dogs. That's pretty much it. And you're positive that it was the pit bull that bit you? Yes, I'm 100% positive. Okay. Any other questions for Mr. Sorto, or do you have anything else, Mr. Sorto? Uh, no, that's it. Any other questions, Ed, Jennifer, nobody? Mr. Officer McFarland, any questions? Okay. All right, Ms. McCarty, um, you know, we're here today. You're obviously, you wanted to have your piece, you know, spoken here. So let's, you know, whatever you have to say, please go ahead. Absolutely. So on the day of the incident, um, my father, who has not been in the right state of mind and has been hospitalized because of it, um, let Henny out of her cage in my bedroom. And the door was ajar, as you guys know, as he said, he's seen her come out of the front door. Um, I was on a business call. I work from home. I'm a technical recruiter. Um, so my office door was shut. I didn't know that he had let her out of the cage. She got out of the front door and I guess, yes, she did bite this man. I have done everything to prevent it from happening. I have a gate out front. I have a fence out back, but I can take further precautions from here on out. I plan on getting an electric fence. I have a quote for that and I'm getting that put in. I can lock my door from now on so someone can't let her out of the cage because of course her cage is locked, but other humans can let her out of the cage. Um, so that's the precaution I plan on taking moving forward. And if there's anything else that anyone can suggest, um, I would take that action. I just love this dog and so does everyone in my family, my nephew, my stepson who's five and seven, they've grown up with her for these past three years. My one-year-old son has known her and you may think, oh, she's dangerous. Okay, I understand to other people. She is very, um, she can be pr protective, but um, she's very loved and we love her and we will do anything to keep her and protect others and protect her. She's very loving and we all love her. So yeah, that's that's all I have. Do you want to say anything? Yeah, I just like to follow up with what she's saying. And I mean, we're, I'm here once or twice a week at least. Um, when I come in, she's fine with me. She's fine with delivery people that come every day because she's not at the door. Um, mom has uh, peat lawn people that come, lawn service. It comes once a month at least. She's never approached or bothered them people at all. I mean, and the front door open and closes perfectly honestly about seven, eight times a day for food deliveries, for package she's deliveries. She's always put away. And she's always put away when the doorbell rings or there's a knock. And I think on the particular day of the incident, as far as the dog, be, the door being ajar, and then the, the bigger dog being able to push that open with their nose, they ran out and she ran behind. And it was just, it, everything happened so fast. But I mean, she plays with the children wonderfully. She plays with all of us great. She's I had pictures. Yeah, she lives with the pictures only of one family. that's in the house. So it's this just since the baby came. She has been so protective of just the entire area of the house. And I mean, and it was very unfortunate because she's been incident free for what, eight, nine months before, you know, this happened. And it's just very unfortunate that the gentleman was hurt and that there was another irresponsible person in the house that left the door ajar and that this has happened with Henny. And I think really that's all I have to add to. I'm going to move In fact, what she said is correct. And it happened so fast. I was outside putting Christmas decorations out. It was my grandson, um, my son that Emily spoke of, and myself. And we were putting lights around a tree. And um, there's even a white gate at the door to stop the dogs from getting out and that's closed and that keeps Henny in the house even if she gets out the door she only gets as far as that gate unfortunately the golden retriever is huge she weighs about 100 pounds 
and she knocked that gate open and all happened in a split second. It was out of my view. I did she see the two. Let her out the cage. She would have never got out of that gate right. in the first place. Right. That's, that's where it starts with. But um, yeah, he, he let her out of the cage. I had no idea she was out. So I didn't even run, but the, the young man was past my view. So I couldn't really see what happened. And when I went around the corner, yes, I was very upset to see Henny there. And yes, I love her. I didn't want anything to happen to her. You know, we take every precaution we can to keep her in the house. And this was just a human error by someone who's irresponsible. And I hate to see Henny pay for it. I love her to death. That's all I have to say. All right, Ms. McCarty, is that everyone? Has everyone spoken their piece on your end? Yes, thank you. Yes. Um, commissioners, do you have any questions of Ms. McCarty or anyone there? Um, I have a question, Ms. McCarty. <clears throat> you said it was your father who let Henny out. Does your father reside with you? Uh, you you're muted, ma'am. I'm sorry. Yes, he does. Okay. And you mentioned that your father has some mental health issues? Yes, he does. Okay. So what is to prevent him from letting this dog out again? So I plan to take further action to, I have a lock on my door and I have a key on my car keys. So I will lock the door and she'll be in the cage in my room and with the door locked because on her cage, of course it's locked, but he can unlock it, but he can't unlock a door that's locked with the key. So mm -hmm. that I have with me, I work in my home office, but I can bring my keys down here with me. Okay, thank you. Absolutely. So I have a question. Um, in the uh, dangerous order, um, it was stated by Officer Herbert that they checked and everything was in compliance. Um, and I take it that the the uh, the animal got loose through the front door. Is is there a, a fence in the front that would have kept him from leaving the property? Are oh, you muted? You're muted again, Ms. McCarty. You, you can go ahead and leave yourself off mute while we're questioning you guys. For okay, that. sorry. Necessary. No problem. There's not a gate in the front of the house, but there's a gate on the front door. Um, yeah, I saw that picture. Yeah, but there's not a gate there's, in the front of the house. There's no... There's, Privacy no. fence or there's okay. a privacy fence around our backyard, but I not around that. the front. So but I'm working on getting a electric fence around the front because of this incident. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Thank you. I got a better picture now. Doesn't the order Absolutely. already require that? So shouldn't have already been. Is there um is there a reason some reason why the front yard couldn't be fenced with a real fence, not an electric fence? Um no, I mean it it could be. Um if that's something that is better than an electric fence and you want us to take that action, we could do that as well. I have a question. <clears throat> yes, sir. What are the uh, ramifications of, uh, I understand this is an appeal of a vicious order and that would be an upgrade from dangerous. What are the ramifications of the appeal? of uh, denying the appeal. So the animal would be basically basically put down at that point. Um, you know, at this point, the, it escalates from, we have danger, uh, potentially dangerous, dangerous, and then vicious orders. Um, you know, an animal does not have to necessarily have had one of the first two to get to a vicious order. Um, it depends on the severity of the bite and, and the circumstances, um, whether it becomes a vicious order or not. But in this case, you know, this this is definitely, you know, warranting a vicious order at this point. Um, this is, this case, generally speaking, has not, it did not come before this committee ahead of time. She did not appeal the initial dangerous order. So we, we this is the first time of us, you know, dealing with this dog directly. So she basically was issued the order and just signed the order directly instead of um, trying to appeal it initially. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. 
Does anyone have any more questions of Ms. McCarty? Uh, yeah, I have a question. Ms. McCarty, yep. have you taken her to uh, some sort of trainer or have, have her evaluated by a trainer or gone through any training with her? Yes, she has done training here at the home by our home vet. She actually has done some training with her. And we plan on getting some more training because um, with the baby being here, she actually recommended us doing training with her um, when she came to do her vet evaluation. So she started to take some action to doing that. Okay, thank you. Can, can you be specific about the type of training that you've had done? Uh, it's behavioral training, but to be more specific right now, honestly, I, I couldn't be more specific. I would have to get that information from her. Okay, so you weren't present when any of the training went on? No, I work from home. I work from nine to five. So my boyfriend was there, not husband. Was there. I understand. Um, so I do have some questions about, you know, I understand you work from home. Uh, I'm trying to get a dynamic of what's going on in the house. Obviously, there's people in and out of the house. They come visit. There's people that live there that are, you know, different stages of your family. Mm -hmm. Others there. Um, you know, I, I'm going to be honest. It, it concerns me directly that, you know, you may be very responsible. You, you may have very responsible people there with you. You have children there in the house. You know, I understand that, you know, I have a hard time with just locking a door and saying that that's that that's going to be the end all be all. I mean, I, I, I'm not I mean, I'm trying to give you a chance to get, make me feel more comfortable with that situation. I don't know exactly how you'll be able to do that, but absolutely. Um, so, you know, I, mean, um, I understand if you have a key on your ring and you lock the door, the dog's in there. But if you happen to go outside or if you're in the kitchen and the door's left, on, I mean, there's there's a lot of little things there. There's a lot of people in and out of that house. It sounds like as far as children, people that live there, people that visit. Right. So even though there is one unresponsible person that did it, there's a lot of responsible individuals that live here. So it's me, my grandmother, and my grandfather. We all work from home here. Me and my grandmother are the only ones tied down on the phone from nine to five because we are both technical recruiters. He is only a programmer and only has scheduled calls usually um, sometimes in the morning and sometimes in the afternoon. Um, and my boyfriend, he only works on the weekend, so he's here all week. Um, even if I can't be out there, usually he's out there. Um, and the only time that Henny would be locked in my room, I would take her out in the morning, um, usually because this is usually our schedule with her in the cage, just not locked in my room. So um, wake up in the morning, take her out, put her, feed her breakfast, then put her back in, lock the door, come, of course, down to work, do my work, my normal work schedule until about 1230. Um, then I could, of course, go have lunch myself, let her out and put her back in, lock the door until I got off at five o'clock. And then, of course, she could be out with me because I am responsible. And that's what we've done for this past nine months. So, um, yeah, you want to add something? I mean, one thing for sure that that might make you more comfortable. I understand how you feel. Um, is that we will put, I had never thought about putting a fence around the outside of the house because the only way she can get out to the outside is through the front door. And usually there's that white gate there at the door that stops her from getting out. Um, but I will I will bear the expense of putting a fence out front. She, she sees people all day, the kids, myself, never growls, never barks, never does anything. Um, only if she's concerned that we're being threatened. And in this particular case, a mistake happened by an adult. But if we have a fence out front and out back, then the dog cannot get out. And I mean, this will be an expense for me, but we'll do what we have to do. She's a sweet, loving dog who made a mistake. Um, and like no one, she doesn't, people come in the house, friends come in the house. Um, and we don't have any problems with her. It's only when it's a stranger. And this was unfortunate. I'm not trying to minimize, you know, the injury uh, to Javier at all. I, he can tell you that I, I felt very bad. I offered to do everything. I told him I paid for everything. Um, but I think the fence outside that was mentioned uh, would be the best, uh, best result. And Emily didn't reply to some of those things because they were sending emails to my email account, not to her. And um, 
So we didn't even see them come in because it's a Gmail account and I must get 50 emails a day. So. Okay, I, I, that, let's not dwell on that. Um, I do have, you know, the one thing in this situation you did mention, your golden retriever was able to, I guess you said somehow push open the, the secondary barrier. You know, that secondary barrier, you know, that was your, that was your fail safe. And that's where I, you know, I get really, it, it upsets me because I know you guys are upset about this. And I know that you guys are very remorseful about what happened and, and, and it's a terrible situation, but that, that barrier there, you know, it, that was your, that was your chance. That's the secondary barrier. That was, if your dog gets out of his cage, he shouldn't be able to get outside. And if a, if a hundred pound dog can, can knock into that cage and, and or that door and knock. It wasn't latched. That's why. What's that? It wasn't latched. It wasn't latched because he left it unlatched. Well, so I mean, that's, I mean, I don't know. It, it's a tough situation. I understand. So, I mean, I, I wanted to give you, you know, give you an opportunity to talk about that secondary barrier. It just wasn't latched. So you think it is appropriate to hold back the dog if it were latched? Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, it's been a while since, I, I don't know, Officer Herbert, when was your last? Was it, was it for the initial inspection? Yes, in June. And it was an appropriate secondary barrier. I mean, it's something that you would see in other yes. houses. Okay. Okay, I mean, because to me, I mean, that's that's too, you know, it wasn't just the, the dog got out of the cage that it was in. It was the dog got out of the cage and then got past the secondary barrier. So, I mean, I understand that well, that, was, that, that, that made a mistake. I understand that, but I, I'm just saying that it's, it's rough. If the, fence, if the fence was there, if the fence is around the front yard and there's a giant fence around the backyard, then she's not going to have any way to get out because there's only that one door. The back door leads to the, the backyard with the big privacy fence, and she's never gotten out of there. Okay. Right. Does anyone have any more questions of the McCarty's or anybody for that matter, Officer Herbert or, or Mr. Sorto, any questions at all? Okay, if there's no more questions, we're going to go ahead and, and have some open deliberations uh, about this. And uh, so you guys can just hang tight and we'll get back with you. All right, so I mean, I'll go ahead and start. I know this is a tough case. Um, my personal opinion, um, you know, this animal has bitten multiple people. Um, it sounds like it, you know, this is where the, the problem comes in. You have one irresponsible person gets in the mix and, and this can happen. Um, you know, I love to give people the benefit of the doubt. And, and I, I look at the fact that they went ahead with the initial dangerous order without even appealing it as kind of like they, they took responsibility right away. They realized what the situation was and it sounds like everything was in place. Um, but obviously best laid plans didn't work out. I, I do, I can see some benefit with the, with the fence in the front. Um, and I could be, you know, if you guys want to talk about that a little bit, I, I'd be happy to talk about it. But it, once again, it comes down to the, to the weakest link. If that chain's left open, I mean, you know, with kids in the house, as those kids get older, I mean, I, I'm concerned that, you know, this is a grown man that was bitten and bitten severely. If that was a child that went by, I mean, we could be here for, you know, totally different situation. I mean, that could have really ended up a lot worse. So, I mean, that's kind of where I am. So if anybody, you know, go with me, uh, Matthew, if you want to join in next and give me your side. Yeah, it's, it's a tough situation. Like, I, I, it demonstrates a lot that they went ahead and complied with the dangerous order to begin with. Um, and I like the idea of a fence, but when we have an irresponsible party in the mix, like you said, that's just another barrier that could be left open. So I, I'm open to discussion. Like the fence is a good idea, but it's still a tough decision. Thank you, Matt. I mean, and to be clear, I'm leaning more towards upholding the vicious order, just to be clear. I mean, I, I want to be, be clear about that across the board. I think that for public safety reasons, I, it's hard to say otherwise. I mean, I understand we have four responsible people sitting there, but it really comes down to the lowest common denominator to me. So I just wanted to make it clear that that's where I'm leaning right now. But like I said, we can discuss it. So Jennifer, do you have, would you like to add? I'm not sure that I have much more, anything else of value to add to the discussion. I, I agree with you. I think this is, is heartbreaking. I feel horrible for this dog. Um, because I think this dog has, you know, obviously an entire family who loves it. And I'm sure it is a sweet dog, but the dad still lives in the house and he is suffering, obviously has some mental health issues. So I don't know how you ever 
even with offense and others. And I've been kicking this back and forth in my head. I'm just not sure how you ever guarantee um, that the dad doesn't do something like this again. Um, you know, in the evening one night, the dog would be out and I realized Miss McCarty um, can take a hold of the dog, but you know, she gets up and goes to the bathroom and dad lets the dog out the front door. I just, um, I, I'd be inclined to uphold the vicious order. All right, thank you. Ed, would you like to go ahead? Yeah, um, I don't like this at all. Um, I wish that the laws were, uh, the end result um, were different in the laws. Uh, however, um, we're torn between, um, you know, upholding that law in the face of a possible fourth fourth victim here okay and and that's where i am swayed is because there was a warning letter in february of this year then it went to a dangerous order this year and then we had another incident which we are here for now which occurred on december all three in the same year now, there's been another law added, uh, Section 124913, which is called the uh, Reckless Animal Owner uh, Clause, uh, which states that if there are three incidents like this within a, a certain period of time, I believe it's 24 months, um, could be 12 months, but this is 12 months here, that... Uh, you know, the, the animal owner can be uh, regarded as a reckless animal owner, and they would be uh, uh, prevented from having any animals on their property for a period of four years. Okay, that, uh, uh, you know, I, that could be a possibility as a result of this as well. Um, but nobody likes uh, the end result of a vicious order. I certainly don't, but we have a responsibility to the public and we have three victims already. And I, I really don't like the little bit of deceit, uh, that was in this case, uh, concerning try to blame it on another dog, uh, to try to save this one. Um, I don't like that. So, um, I love animals. I love them all. Um, but I have to uphold the law. And unfortunately, I agree uh, uh, with the, uh, you know, prior uh, determinations of this, uh, this commission that the uh, vicious order should be upheld. And I'm, I'm really sorry. All right, Ed, thank you. All right, Officer McFarland, uh, you'll be the last one we, we get from. Can I have your opinion, please? Um, it's a hard case for my first case. Uh, this is really difficult. Um, there's some information that's come out that I, I wasn't aware of. I tried to review the, um, the documentation, but, uh, you know, first time looking at this stuff, it's... Um, really difficult to take it all in and understand where it fits in the grand scheme of things. <clears throat> the fourth, uh, sir, you just said, uh, Mr. Evans said that there was a fourth victim, that this is the fourth victim. And what time frame is No, that? no, I, I, I said there could be a fourth victim. Yeah, I okay. think he was alluding to the fact that, that if someone else was to be bitten, we're at four. That's okay. So right. we, have, we have three victims at to date, and that's all within 2021. Um, yeah, I think my main problem, I, I mean, I would like to see the fencing and I, um, but I, I, my main problem with this is, um, there, I believe there's more than one irresponsible adult in the house. I believe there's substandard training that has occurred with the dog. Um, I, I, th I think there's a lot going on in that household in which um, maybe they're overwhelmed with the amount of pets they have and the abilities that they have in order to uh, take care of them. 
Um, I just wish that the um, punishment was more for the, like you said, the reckless dog owners than the dog itself. That's where I stand on it. So, uh, uh, unfortunately, I, I would uphold a vicious order as well. All right. Well, thank you. Um, I understand, guys, this is not where anyone just want to be, you know, dealing with a situation like this. No one ever wants to see an animal put down at all. Um, you know, until the law changes, then that's kind of where we are. But um, I'm going to go ahead and ask for a motion uh, at this point. Um, anybody want to give me a motion? Um, I'll make a motion that the vicious order be upheld and um, possibly to uh, uh, let the uh, chief uh, make the chief aware of section 124913. Okay, maybe we'd like to second that. Um, actually, I think you, the motion needs to be severed. You can make two separate motions for those things, but I don't think it's appropriate to include them both in you're, one. You're probably right. They would have to go through the appeals process. And then uh, if it's upheld through the appeals, th then I would uh, imagine that the chief would have to consider the uh, uh, the uh, reckless animal owner uh, thing. So I don't, that's a new, that's a new law. I don't know how it works, but I can imagine that it would, you're, you're correct, Jennifer, that it would probably have to go through the appeals process and be upheld at the very end of that to consider applying the reckless owner. So, okay, uh, I will just make a motion that the vicious order be upheld. I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. All right, thank you guys. I know it's a tough one. <sighs> All right, Phil, if you want to go ahead and call the next one. Absolutely, sir. Our next case, we have Animal Care and Control versus Tanzania Sheffy. All parties who have an interest in this case and wish to testify may now come forward to take the oath. Please utilize Zoom's raise hand feature. I'll get you added in one by one and then sworn in all together at the end. Let's start with Officer Bone. Can you hear me? Yes. Thank you kindly. If you would please state your name and address for the record. Officer Bowen, 411 Maxwell Fry Road, Millersville, Maryland, 21108. Thank you kindly. Hang up for just one second. And off, or, uh, huh. thought I fixed that name. Supervisor Canning, if you would please state your name and address for the record. Hi, I'm uh, Supervisor Canning, ID 3505, Field Supervisor. And the address. Officer, uh, Supervisor Canning. I'm sorry. One more time. State, state the facility's address as well, please. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, 411 Maxwell Fry uh, Road, Millersville, Maryland. Thank you kindly. And Ms. Hillman? Or is it Dr. Hillman? No. DS. Oh. Yes. Yeah, no, okay. Yes. You would please your name and address for the record. Sure. Diet Hillman, one three seven two Woodbine Road, Woodbine, Maryland. Thank you kindly. And let's see. I do have a couple missing here. Let me just check my list of notices. Well, the defendant. That's important. And one of the veterinarians. Give me just one second. Let me make a couple calls.
Uh, so the defendant's contact is going straight to voicemail. Uh, have either of the officers received any kind of contact from the defendant? No. All right. All right. Um, I mean, they were made, you guys made them aware, correct? I mean, they were sent notice, I'm sure. Yep, I've got the notice right here, sent out over two weeks ago, and that's standard. Everybody else got theirs, it seems. Bill, did you get any response from the um, petitioner? Nope, nope. They filed their petition, they were given their notice, and the contact number they provided is going straight to voicemail. Um, and did they give us email? What methods did we uh, use to notify? Mail, phone. No email was provided by the defendant. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I would assume in this situation, we just go ahead and uphold. I mean, there's no one here to sure. argue. Effectively deny the petition, yep. Yeah, deny, oh, yeah, I guess it's in this case, it's petition, right? So. Um, how does that, well, I mean, I, I'm, I'm reading the, the documents now, but don't you still have to put some testimony on? Uh, usually it, it defaults to like a citation would be dismissed or upheld depending on who failed to appear or an order would just be upheld by default or a petition would be denied. So essentially they requested this hearing and they have now failed to appear. Same as if you didn't show up for a court hearing. Okay, so the order, whatever, so the order they were appealing just stays in effect? Yeah, yes. they were petitioning. Okay, the all right, that was my order. question. And effectively, that uh, request to return those horses will be denied, and they will remain in custody of animal care and control. Okay. All right. I see Curran's chimed in. Yeah, yeah, that. yeah, that is correct. Right. Thank you, Curran. Appreciate that. All right. Thank you. All right. So let's go ahead. I mean, I don't know if we need a vote to dismiss or just dismiss well, it outright. I have one question. What it, what then would be the determination uh, for the uh, horses involved? Um, sorry about the background noise. We got some maintenance guys in here. Robin, would you be able to chime in on that? I'm not familiar with the case. Are they being cared for? Uh, obviously, they're being cared for currently. And yes. would this mean that they would remain where they are? And so they they will remain where they are. And just like other cases, um, this will this will have the opportunity to be appealed to Board of Appeals for the the time, just like other things. Um, and and then we'll go from there. Okay, but in, until such time, they will uh, still get the proper care they need. Absolutely, I, they are receiving wonderful care where they are. Great. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, can I speak to the matter? Uh, just, so you, just so you know, there is the criminal side to this case. So whatever happens here, we still have um criminal charges against the owner of the horses so her uh, lack of attending this hearing she still has the criminal side she has to deal with okay thank you officer canning all right so again i i we can go ahead and we need to take a vote to dismiss or we just dismiss i'm not exactly sure procedurally how that works i mean we just dismissed it on according to current it, it happens by operation of law yeah so. yeah right so i think we're just good to go case dismissed at this point we're golden. Okay. All right. Let's see. May I call the next case? Yes, sir. Go right ahead. I'm sorry. Thank you, Connie. No worries. So our next case, we have Susan Williams versus Edmund McNulty for two citations for the public safety threat. Four is the ending in seven one zero is the ending in six zero for Talga the dog. All parties who have an interest in this case wish to testify may now come forward to take the oath. Please utilize Zoom's raise hand feature. I'll get it to add it in one at a time and then sworn in all together at the end there. Let's see. Promote them up here. Good morning. Richard Simmons from the McNulty's is present. And the McNulty's are present with me. Thank you kindly. If you would all please uh, state your name and address for the record. Mrs. McNulty, would you state your name and address for the record, please? Hi, Melody McNulty, 8212 Powers Lane, 
Millersville, Maryland, 21108. And Mr. McNulty, would you state your name and address for the record, please? Yes, Greg McNulty, uh, 8212 Powers Lane, Millersville, Maryland, 21108. And uh, that's it. Thank you kindly. Hang on for just one second, and I'll get you all sworn in at the end. And Ms. Williams, if you would please uh, enable your video. There we are. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Thank you kindly. If you would please state your name and address for the record. Susan Williams, um, 8251 Kippus Road, Millersville, Maryland. Thank you very much. If everyone involved would please raise your right hand. Do you declare and affirm under the penalties of perjury the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Yes. Thank you all kindly. If you would please remain muted unless called upon to speak, and we are good to proceed. Mr. Burgett, just one preliminary matter for you. I, we want to save the commission time if we can. We sure. did not intend to dispute the uh, the factual allegations contained in the affidavits to support the two charges that are before the commission this morning. We simply um, wanted to uh, provide mitigation. So we would um, stipulate to the to the reading into the record of the affidavit if you wish to do that, or if the commission's already, if they're already aware of that, then you can submit on that, or I'm, I'm comfortable doing that if, if you are, just to save time. Honestly, I'm not, I'm not exactly sure. I'm not, that was a lot of law speak and I'm not a lawyer. So I'm exactly sure where we stand. Maybe I have to defer to Ms. Brianza on this one. Actually, I mean, I, I think just as a matter of just normal course, we would read that affidavit anyway. Um, so I, I, I mean, he just generally saying there's no argument to it. I think we need to read it into the record just yeah, I think you're right. facts if we're going to mitigate it. So All right, um, yeah, let's, let's, I agree with you, Jennifer. Let's go ahead with that. Who um, did the officer who took this? Well, that, this is a this is a citation right. case. So. Right, it is a citation, but I didn't know if the person who received it because somebody signed off. Right, there is an officer that signed the citation. The affidavit of complaint. The affidavit of complaint was submitted by Miss Williams, um, officiated by myself, and then issued to the defendants. So uh, normally at this point, we would hear from Ms. Williams as she is the complainant. Right. And I'm sorry, Mr. Hall, could you also be aware that Debbie Winkler is the animal behaviorist that is going to testify on behalf of the McNulty's? She may be trying to get into the meeting right now. So just so you know that. Absolutely. Uh, if you have an email address for her, you can send it to me. I can get her a direct invite. If she's having technical issues, that tends to nip that in the bud. Thank you. All right, so at this time, I think what I want to do is I'm going to just go let Ms. Williams present, you know, why we're here today. And then I understand that you guys stipulate that you're not going to argue that that situation, but I'd like to hear it from her and then we'll go from there. So Ms. Williams, if you'd like to uh, let us know why you issued these citations or citation, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, it was, it was due to the uh, animal attack that or their dog attack, um, you know, we, I was just out walking my two dogs on leash and um, out of nowhere, here comes their dog. And it, it, the reason why I, I filed is because I didn't know anything about, you know, what was going on. You know, they didn't reach out and say, you know, this is what happened and this is what we're gonna do to um, prevent it from happening again or anything. So I would okay. that's fine. Anything else to add? Okay. All right. So Mr. Simmons and the McNulty's, if you'd like to, that's go ahead with, uh, and uh, Commissioner Burgett, there was a, uh, there's a second citation that, that arose from the same incident. I don't know if that's, um, if you're aware that that's on the docket this morning or not, it's Mr. Plant is the complaining witness in that case. Okay, are you able to get in? I just thought it'd be easier for us to do them both at the same time since they're the same incident. Okay. Uh, um, hold up, because- Yeah, that's not one of us today. 
Uh, actually, it is on the agenda. Both citations are, um, but only one complainant is listed, and there is no other information in the file online. Okay, I'm I'm sorry, but I only see one citation. What, what I got, so. Um, you're not looking at the updated agenda, Ed. Um, you're looking. No, at I have I have a binder, and I only have one citation in it. This this right, but I'm just on the agenda this morning is listed two different citations. Yep. So I do have that second one here. I was unaware that it was a different defend or a different complainant in that case. So Mr. Plant has not been notified. Oh, okay. Okay. So no, if, if that makes a difference for you, I, 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 I just, the purpose of having this thing consolidated because of course they arose out of the same incident. Um, and I thought it'd be most appropriate for them to be dealt with together. I don't think we can deal with them together if the other person hasn't been given notice, but I think it, um, I'd hate to have you guys come back. I'd hate to do this all over again a yeah. second time. Um, uh, maybe we can handle it because my clients are, they're, they're not going to, they're not, they're not contesting the, the second citation um, either. So if you can deal with it, we'll present the mitigation for both citations this morning. Um, Honestly, I, I hate to wish. You're, you're not contesting the citations. Are you requesting uh, reduction in fees? Well, I think, I think the two, are, they, they may merge for the purpose of, of the fines because they arose from the same set of facts. And I think that, I mean, the statute provides for the violation to come in. It's an either or, so there's not really an and there. So it can be violated one of two ways. And since it was one incident, the it was the statute was violated. Um, the reason why it was violated can be for reason number one or for reason number two. So is there, but this, what I'm seeing on this citation is that there was an injury to a domesticated animal. Is there another animal victim? There was not because the second citation alleged that the there was just the dog was at large. It was sub it's subsection A5 is the second citation. So there's different there's a different charge or different basis for the violation of the statute. So right. We have, we have the affidavit that Miss Williams submitted, which is public safety threat three kills or injury three. domesticated animal. We have the second affidavit that was submitted by Mr. Plant, which is for 402. Five, while at large chases or approaches a lawfully restrained domesticated animal in an aggressive manner. So That's right. assuming that the animal while at large approached a domesticated animal that was on a leash and inflicted injury to it, we have two, two different complainants filing for the same incident, which violates multiple sections of county law. But I personal opinion is that we shouldn't hear either one at this point and that we need to give the other gentleman notice and reschedule both citations i know that is awful for you mr simmons and i apologize i understand that creates additional fees for your clients but i, I can't see doing this twice well, um, i also don't know how we can do it it's two separate citations run by two different citizens i don't know how and it didn't happen at the same time uh, I think we should go forward with what's in front of us today. Okay, That's hold up. Wait, wait. I'm hearing that this arose out of the same set of facts. So, but so you're so now I'm hearing that. this happened at a different time. Are these? Uh, I have the incidents both occurring on the 19th of September, 2021. So, if the dog was at large at the same time, I'm, I'm, what I'm understanding is potentially the dog was at large and had two separate incidents, maybe not at the same exact moment. It was the. It, it was the, it was while it was at large at the one time. So it matter of fact, it was I think Mr. Plant's incident occurred. Then the dog continued down the down the street where the second incident occurred. So it's it's separated by geography for sure. Separated by geography, but it's the same. It's this the, the event that took place was the the animal got loose at one time. All right. So I would be I would be inclined if we could to just go ahead and postpone this to next month when the next meeting is. Give Mr. Plant the opportunity to join the meeting so we can well, do this at one time. I'm fine with that, but I don't know that it would be still be done at one time. I don't know if Ritter can chime in here. Um, Kurt, I'm sorry. Um, that would be unfair to Miss Williams, I think. Yeah, I mean, if there, if there are two separate incidents that didn't occur in the same place, understanding that it's because the animal was at large, I understand that. And you can still, you know, you, you'd be present at the same day, for whatever. I mean, she's here now. I think we should hear this case now. That's That's my opinion, but. Kern, I don't know if you have anything to chime in here, but if I'm seeing this right, we're having it's two separate citations, understanding for the same incident for the dog being at large at the same time, but we're talking about two different people, two different citations. Well, this citation should be heard now, as far as I'm concerned. 
I mean, do we need to ask for a special turn? I'm not sure how this works. Whether or not to hear it now is going to be up to uh, the commission. It, it would be two separate citations, so you could hear them separately. The issue with that is going to be that it seems that Mr. Simmons has a rather substantial mitigation that he's intending to present. So sure. the question is whether or not you want to hear that twice and hear the same information both times. Um, that's going to be up to the board. You would be able to kind of they you wouldn't be handling them as one citation but you would be able to if it's the same incident have all the parties present the information in one hearing and then go forward on each citation and just put in a make a separate motion and a separate decision in each citation even if you're doing it as one hearing so that uh, the mitigation is only presented once in both it's animal care and control or Anne Arundel county um, issuing a citation to uh, owners of the dog so it's not the individual complainants are here to testify as to what they saw because they were the only witnesses but it is the same parties are involved in both citations because it's the county issuing the citation in both situations all right thank you for making it clear this was current, district right? court uh and current you know correct me if i'm wrong if this was district court these cases i mean these these cases would be held together okay that's i fine. think it's repetitive like said, just separately as I started this right. out, I, I'm not a lawyer, so I, it, you know, I'm, I'm fine to take his advice. And, and, and that being said, let me ask you, Miss Miss Williams, would you be unduly put out to come back next month? And, and if we got you guys in the first, uh, the first, right at nine o'clock docket, get this thing squared away first thing, would you be able to do that the first Monday of next month? Would that put you out? Um, I, I am working, so it is on my time. But I, if, if we could be first then. Phil, can we make that happen? Yes, sir. If you think, I mean, I, I'm at, you know, I think it's fair. I mean, if she's willing to come back next month, I'd be fine to, to put the, put it off till next month. Does anybody we want to put it to a vote? I mean, I'm fine with that. Jennifer, I mean, I, I seem, I feel like you wanted to go that route anyway. Ed, are you okay with that? Well, I, you know, I mean, I disagree. Um, I know the majority of the board wants, uh, you know, for whatever reasons, you know, make it. But yeah, I disagree. I, we have all the all of the uh, parties here for this particular uh, affidavit that was sent in by Miss Williams, and I. My, it's my opinion that we should just go forward with this, determine this, and then take care of the other ones. Uh, you know, when it's scheduled. Okay. Next one. That, that's my, that's my opinion. I mean, okay. if it was me sitting in uh, Miss Williams' chair, uh, I'd be a little ticked off. Okay, fair enough. So, Matt, you, or Mr. Shock, you have input? Uh, I think it, we're all here. Uh, it would be, okay. I think it's unfair to Ms. Williams to postpone this. I would, I would proceed today. All right, Mr. McFarland. Uh, I think it's incumbent upon the county and the, and the commission to, uh, to, to proceed and provide as little. Um, I think the victim's already gone through enough okay for us to pour right. out further is all right i've kind of straw poll let's do an official vote uh let's proceed today or uh you know who'd like to proceed today let's show of hands okay all right let's just go ahead all right so now we've already heard testimony from miss williams okay so let's let's just go ahead mr simmons and let's see what you got thank you um just one question for miss williams since she is present miss williams the injury to your dog the affidavit indicates that there was some hair that was pulled out from the dog's tail. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Was there any other injury to the dog? Um, not physically. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Um, Mr. Commissioner um, and the commissioners, um, we've submitted an exhibit package for you that you should have before you. Mr. Hall was good enough to disseminate that by PDF for us. Um, I would just like to direct you to some remedial measures that have been taken. You have before you in that package of about 23 pages and exhibits. Um, page number two is a curriculum. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Time out, time out. Yes. Do we have this? You should, yes. Mr. Hall? Yeah, let me pull up the drive here. We've got... No, I see it in the drive. Nulty. I've got it right here. Let's see. Okay. And should be there 27 pages. Correctly? 
to do. Yep. Yes, right 27 pages. Right and Mr. Hall, is it is it possible for you to call um, Miss Winkler to get her on? She seems to be having some trouble. Yeah, I can I can send her an invite by phone if she's trying to join. Yes, that's what she's trying to do. Let me see if I can give you that information. Um, you want to maybe email it to me so that way it's not broadcast. Let me throw it in the chat if I can throw it in the chat to you. Okay, Sorry, Mr. Commissioner. Way. Just give me your indulgence for just one second. I'll see if this chat works for me. Fine. Four one zero nine eight four. One second. Yep. Nine zero four seven. All right, Mr. Hall. Did you get that? Yes, sir. Let me get that out. So just for a second, I just want you to be aware of the qualifications of Ms. Winkler, who's, who my clients have engaged at this point in time after this incident, um, to properly assess the animal, to assess their living situation, and going forward to make sure that this is this doesn't happen again. And Ms. Winkler, just for your benefit, they are going to talk for later. Is like we didn't hear about your complaint um, until, and well, when we did hear about you being involved in this was when we when we received your complaint. And at that time, it was, I told my clients that it was, in, it was inappropriate because you're a witness at that point in time to really reach out and contact you in any way. However, you'll hear that the other people were contacted prior to this by them, or they certainly would have, being that they want to be responsible neighbors. But um, commissioners, if we look at that, you see the, the, the qualifications. Ms. Ms. Uh, Ms. Winkler has been involved with, uh, she's been 25 years in the community. She's testified for various animal control boards. She's appeared in court as an expert witness in other cases similar to this, and she's got a specialty in dealing with violent or vicious animals. We'll hear from her from, for a second with her recommendations. What you'll see from the package is if you'll turn after that, her curriculum vitae is on page two. On page six, you see a, a picture which is the backyard of my clients, which shows a seven-foot privacy fence. That provides an area, substantial confinement for the animal where the animal can run and, um, and can have a, a, a good quality of life and, and still while protecting the community. You'll also see, if you look, if you flip over to page 13, on page 13, you'll see a close up of the gate on the backyard. There's one point of egress, ingress in that backyard area. You'll see that gate. You'll see that there's a there's a redundancy in place. There is a there's a there's a fence that is interior of that of that area, which is the first barrier to get through. So if the, the gate was accidentally opened and the dog was out back, the dog would not only have to get through that exterior gate, but it would have to get through that fence that's around that exterior gate. So there's some redundancy in place for that egress from the backyard. And you'll also note that there's a close-up picture on page 13 where that gate is permanently padlocked so someone couldn't accidentally come in through the back while Tolga was outside and cause a problem. So that's fixed now so the backyard is secured, uh, fully secured so the animals is safe uh, for itself and also safe for the neighborhood. If you'll turn to page 14, you'll see points of um, exit of the interior of the house. The dog stays in the interior of the house. On this particular occasion, the dog was inside the house. My clients have not yet been able to determine how the dog escaped, um, but they've gone through their house, and of course, with the help of Ms. Winkler, they put these other things in place. You'll see interior gates around the um, points of exit in their house. The left-hand page on, on page, I'm sorry, my, my left-hand page, but page 14 is the garage door. So there's actually going to be three gates to get through before that. You've got the interior gate, you've got the interior door, and the garage door. Those things are all shut at the same time, sort of like a sally port at the detention center, which one you once you go in, one door opens up, the other door closes. So at no point in time could all the doors be open up at the same, the theory being that all the doors wouldn't be open at the same time. You'll see on page 15, again, another interior gate has been installed around the front door of the house. And then if you flip over to the page 16, at the front door of the house, there's a third gate that's installed at the porch area, which would prevent the dog. If the dog was able to get through gate number one, get through the door, then there would still be a gate number three outside on the porch, which the dog would have to get through before the dog would be out into the common areas of the, of the community. You see on 17, upon the recommendation of, of um, the um, 
of our animal behaviors, which Ms. Winkler is now present, is that um, if the dog was out in public in, in general, going to the vet or, or for some reason outside the property itself, is that there is a muzzle that's in place and that would be used. Page 18, instead of just using a collar, you'll see that there's a full body harness that will be employed so the dog is always under control and can't get away from the owner by getting out of that collar. And as you'll see from page 19, that there is a collar in place with some various electronic devices. Technology is a beautiful thing when it works for us. They're utilizing the technology that's available to them to make sure that they have a location on Tolga at all times. You'll see that that tile is there and that tile will enable them to locate Tolga. And there's some other functions to that that I'll let um, the McNulty's tell you about, which um, helps them to locate and, and get Tolga to come back or, or, or otherwise to command Tolga. The only other thing I've got for the commissioner to, for, for consideration is that, that they see that they're, my clients are homeowners there in the community. They've been there for a substantial period of time. You'll see the map of the layout of the community and specifically that backyard area that's on page um, 25, which you get kind of a better idea of what's going on. Of course, I provide the declaration page. I'm, I'm, I'm under the understanding that there is a, there is an umbrella policy that's in place. I was not provided the declaration page for the uh, for the umbrella policy, but I know that that's one of those remedial measures that sometimes the commission likes to say, my clients at this point in time wanted to come before you to let you know how serious that they view this incident and that they want to make sure that that something like this doesn't happen again. They want to be good neighbors, but they also want to be responsible um, dog owners. They also have another dog in their house. The two dogs um, get along fine, one six, and this one is three. Um, and they believe that with these remedial measures that they put in place and with the help of, of Ms. Winkler, that this will be prevented and that it won't happen again. And um, if Ms. Winkler can hear us right now, Ms. Winkler, would you like to add anything to what I've just provided um, the commission as background information and what we plan, what we have in place going forward? Can, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Could you speak up louder? Sure. Uh, okay. Miss Winkler, we, we can't actually hear you legibly. I noticed you, you have managed to connect via um, Zoom here. I, I know we had uh, sent you a thing by phone. Are you able to utilize a microphone on the device you're using for Zoom? That might. Can you hear me now? Uh, 100%. Perfect. Okay. Okay. Uh, All right. I had, I, I don't know what the problem was, but. Okay. If I could get you sworn in real quick, are you able to enable the video on this? Uh, I cannot. I, I had to make a, I had to rearrange a lot to be able to be present today because that's, my schedule is full and I'm in a facility okay. where I have been asked not to have the camera on. We can, we can do it audibly. That's all right. Uh, if you okay. would please state your name and address for the record. Um, my name is Deborah Winkler. Um, 6825 White Rock Road, Sykesville, Maryland, 21784. Thank you kindly. And if you could please raise your right hand for me, I'm going to trust you on that one. Do you declare and affirm okay. under the penalties of perjury the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth? Yes. Thank you kindly. You may proceed. All right. The McNulty's are sincere people. They love their dog. They do not want their dog to hurt anyone or any other dog. And they've made that quite clear to me. They have put everything in place to prevent the dog from escaping. And even with the locks on the gates and the extra gate and so forth, they're going to be vigilant and observe the dog while in the yard. Um, the dog is going to be muzzled when it is outside of the yard, even just to take it to the car, to the vet. As long as they are compliant with those things, there should be no problem. I've dealt with, there are many dogs that exhibit these types of behaviors and I've dealt with hundreds. And as long as owners are compliant, with the protocol that has been put in place for management, there should be no additional problem. Ms. Winkler, Ms. Winkler, yes. can, you, can you give us some of your background? I understand it's attached as part of these exhibits, but I, I don't actually have time at the moment to read through the 20 pages of website that were submitted. Can you tell us exactly who you are and um, give us some of your background? Uh, I'm an applied animal behaviorist. I'm certified by the International Association of Animal Behavior Consultants. 
Um, probably the most significant thing I can tell you is that I spent six years on Baltimore City's Vicious Dog Hearing Board. My background is ethology, which is animal behavior and comparative psychology. And I've been, been seeing, I work with domestic and exotic animals and have been in business. It's actually closer to 30 years now. Great, thank you. Thank you. You're welcome, you're welcome. Hey, Ms. Pickler, could you just tell the commission, which courts have you been declared an expert witness in in the past? Um, Anne Arundel County, Baltimore County, Baltimore City, Harford County. And I was uh, qualified as an expert witness for a case in Delaware some time ago. And was the, was the subject matter of, of, of those cases similar to the subject matter that's before the commission today? Yes. In, in fact, yes. And, and part it's of your test... In part of your assessment, were you able to reach out and actually speak to the people, Miss Williams in particular, or the other people that, that, that personally observed the dog's behavior that day? Miss Williams did not return my call. Were you able to speak um, to any other witnesses? Yes. Okay. And, and your opinion is based upon not only the, the documents that you've received from my office, which included the documents that were produced from my animal control, but also those interviews that you had with these other witnesses? Yes. And, uh, and go ahead, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, no, go their, ahead. Their, yeah, their concern was being able to prevent it because they, they did not want to see another episode like this. And I did ask them uh, specifically um, if they thought when protocol was in place and the dog would not be able to escape, would they be comfortable? And the answer was yes. And just for the commission's benefit, the, the people that you spoke to, other than, of course, the, the McNulty's, who were the, these other people that you spoke to? Oh, I don't have their name in front of me. Um, maybe Land, Land, Landy. I mean, okay. I have to pull. I'd have to pull that up. I'm not in my office. I'm in a facility. Um, and I spoke, and they they are in Florida at the moment, or they were when I spoke to them, husband and wife. Um, uh, and I'm not at my computer, so. Um, was there? Was there? It, does Richard Plant's name ring a bell? Did you that's see it. Him? Plant. Okay, that's Richard it. Plant. Plant. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Unless the commission has any other questions for Miss Winkler, I don't have any other questions. No, I think we're good to go. Then, okay. Mister Mr. Commissioner, I'll go ahead and call uh, Miss McNulty just briefly. Miss McNulty, could you state your name and address for the record, please? Yes, Melody McNulty at 8212 Powers Lane, Millersville, Maryland, 21108. And Ms. McNulty, do you have anything you'd like to share specifically with Ms. Ms. Williams at this point in time? Oh, Ms. Williams, um, I did not even hear your name until about two months ago. And I am so very, we are so very sorry that we did not reach out to you. Um, you had mentioned that, um, I'm just looking at that, the dog, the tail, how is your dog hurt? And how is the, your dog's mental state? Because we are very concerned as animal lovers that you are able to still go out and safely feel comfortable walking your dog in our Pondview community. How are you doing? So as far as, like I said, physically, she's fine, but it's hard for me to take her out. She doesn't like to go out anymore, especially, you know, that path is the path we take to the dog park and I can't get her to go down there anymore. She pulls, she'll sit, she'll turn around. So mentally she's scared. Yeah. And she's a little dog, so, mm -hmm. you know, and now she's scared of all, the, she's scared of other dogs. Whenever she hears barking, she goes the other way, and it's just, it's been a process. I am so sorry. I just want you to know that. Um, uh, we feel terrible. We really do. And... Um, I know where Kippus is. I would have, um, we would have made an effort to contact you and come see you. Um, 
Uh, we felt terrible. I, I don't know what else to say, except I'm so very, very sorry. I appreciate that. Ms. McGilty, is there anything else you'd like to share with the commission about this incident or, or about what we've talked about as far as these measures we've taken to make sure that something like this doesn't happen again? Well, I can tell you that I watch every move Talga makes in the house. Um, she cannot go on walks in the neighborhood. Um, she won't ever again. She will be inclined to stay in the backyard. Um, so that's why all the gates and the safety measures to keep her in a very secluded area. Um, so this doesn't ever happen again. Uh, Mr. Commissioner, I don't have any other questions unless the commissioner would like to pose any questions to Ms. McNulty. No, um, I'll, I'll let the other commissioners, if they have any questions, I'd just like to say, um, you know, for a citation case, the, um, what I've seen you present here is, is substantial. Um, in a situation like this, we don't usually see someone, you know, do this much. So it's obvious that you care about your dogs, um, you know, welfare moving forward. Um, you know, you basically have complied with, complied with a dangerous order without ever having been presented one, um, which is something that, you know, I think speaks, speaks uh, volumes. So if anyone else has anything they'd like to say before we deliberate? I would actually like to, um, I'm sorry, I don't usually cut in, but uh, we have Mr. Plant. Yeah. So he's, yep, yeah, he's able to, to come in and I, I know that that'll smooth out the, um, the McNulty's schedule. Let me bring him up here as the other complainant in this issue. Well, thanks. Thanks for reaching. I'm assuming you reached out, Phil. So thanks for getting that squared away. Absolutely. All right. So Mr. Plant is up. If you would please unmute, sir, if you can hear me, and then we'll get your video started up. I'll get you sworn in. I'm trying to stop my video. There's my video. That looks okay. perfect, sir. I can see you and I can hear you. Can you hear me okay? Yes. yes. Thank you so much. If you would please state your name and address for the record. Richard Plant. Mary Ellen Plant. Thank you. At 8309 Pondview Drive, Millersville, Maryland, 21108. Thank you both kindly. And are, are you both looking to testify in this? Yes, because the dog ran at me and then Richard witnessed something later. I got you. Just making sure that I'm swearing you both in. If you would please both raise your right hand. And then do you declare and affirm under the penalties of perjury the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. I do. Thank you kindly. Um, All right. Before they begin, Phil, can we just add, um, Mr. And Mrs. Plant, did you hear everything that Mr. Simmons presented? Were you on the line for that? We were on for the last about four or five minutes. So, yes, we heard some of the information. Yeah. Some of the information. Well, I'm going to ask him to briefly kind of go back and hit the high points for you. But if you'd like to go ahead, um, and mm -hmm. so we're just going to go ahead and include the plants now oh. and see what's going on. But if you guys would like to give us, you know, what happened to you that day quickly, and then I'm going to have Mr. Simmons kind of provide you with what they've presented so far, and then we'll go from there. I'd like to talk first. This yes, is how it started. Uh, we were walking up to the top of Pondview Drive on the right side of the road, and my husband said, you know, just wait here with Piper, and he walked across to the mailbox. And the dog came running at me, full speed, snarling lips, growling. Now, I have arthritis, and I was in a particular flare. And all I could think of was, how am I going to fall to the ground? I can't use my wrist and my elbow. I, I was so freaked out and so terrified that I didn't know, should I pick up my dog, try and fall before the dog knocks me down? I didn't know what to do. I was terrified. So what I did was, as the dog got close, I went, <laughs> I screamed and threw my hands out, and the dog did back up. But, I mean, I was terrorized. And I do understand we all love our dogs. I mean, I love mine. I know you guys love your dog. But, you know, the dog didn't bite me, but I could have really injured myself had I fallen. I mean, it's not just a dog bite. It's the the falling. Now, fortunately, when I screeched like that, and believe me, 
um, Jim, um, who lives in the house near there, he heard me scream inside his house. So, I mean, I really, you know, so that's, that's all I have to say. I, I was completely terrified. Thank you. Mr. Plant? I tried to get in between the dog and my wife as I saw the dog attacking. And he tried to run around me. And every time he tried to run around me, I stayed in front of him so that he couldn't get to my dog. Uh, he was being followed by a young man. I don't know who he was in the neighborhood. And the man was asking me, is this your dog? I said, no. I said, do you know where he lives? He said, no. Uh, the dog walked down Zeman heading uh, east uh, on, the right, on, the, on the south side of the road. There was a young lady walking a baby carriage and a, little, a small dog up uh, Zeman on the north side. And I saw the dog was about a block ahead of me, went across the street as if he was going to attack, but then for some reason stopped. Um, he then went further across to Nieder, which is further east, uh, got onto the sidewalk there on, on the east side, did see another lady down uh, Nieder walking a dog and in full gallop started running towards uh, the dog. I ran down, tried to yell something to them to you know, watch out. Uh, she screamed. Two men from uh, the neighborhood on either side of where she was standing came out. And I did have a picture that I sent of, of that dog as he got close to the, to the men and the woman who had then picked up a dog. He sort of turned and, and walked, walked away and, and just sort of followed the path back south down Nieder. Um, came very close to humans. He had no problem with humans. It was just small animals that he seemed to uh, be going after. Um, he went across uh, Obrecht, and I then walked back home. At that point, uh, a pickup truck driver with his wife uh, had uh, driven up. The, the wife was driving the truck, and the man had had a, uh, a leash. He saw the dog uh, coming across the street and got out and somehow to put the collar on him and was walking him back up because he had a, a, an address uh, label on his neck and was walking up uh, Pondview asking, do you know who owns this dog? And I said, no. He said, well, I got a, a phone number here and I think there's an address. And while we were talking, uh, the lady from uh, Kippus was coming down uh, Mariana and I asked him to uh, pull the dog forward so that the dog, the truck would be in the way of him seeing uh, the two small dogs. Uh, he's got a glimpse of the dogs, but was pulled forward. And as he was being pulled forward, slipped out of the collar, went behind the truck and then ran after the two dogs. Um, the lady was screaming and, and he did grab the buttocks of, of the smaller dog, one small dog, the white British dog, and flipped them about five or six feet. I didn't see any blood or anything like that, but we, we were all, there was about one, two, three, maybe four people there yelling, and uh, the dog finally just walked away, uh, back down towards uh, the pond, uh, Obrecht. Uh, the young man had left and gone over to him and, and cautioned him that uh, I guess his dog was loose, and he came out and was looking for them because I saw them, I saw the young man and the owner walking in or across Obrecht. Uh, I had called initially when I got home, um, um, Mel, and talked to her. She just said, your dog's loose. And she said, well, you know, he must have gotten out. Uh, whenever we walk him, we always walk him with a muzzle. And uh, that gives you an indication of, of they know that there's a problem. Uh, I just fear that if he ever gets out again, something's going to happen. Now, I understand they've done you know, great, well, gone great distance to to double fence and and, and protect the neighborhood. Uh, if that's satisfactory with the county, uh, I understand. Uh, I just hope the dog doesn't get out again because if it does, then that's that's something that's a totally different condition that you know action has to be taken. I got as far you. as the county's concerned. Thank you very much, Mr. Plant. So just to make sure everyone's clear today, most this Ms. Williams and Mr. Plant, we are we are here today to either uphold or dismiss a citation that you brought against the other party. Okay, just so you're aware of you know your expectations. We're here to uphold a $50 citation one way or the other. 
as far as any other mitigation, we, we don't really have any. Um, okay. Mr. Simmons, you know, you, you missed out, you know, we, he's presented in full what, what um, the McNulty's have, have accomplished to try to mitigate all your concerns. Um, I'm going to give him some time here to explain to you again. I know, Ms. Williams, you've, been, you've heard this. I heard some of it. Yeah, so if, if he'd like to summarize kind of, the, you know, and we've had, and they even have a, a behavior specialist online um, to speak to it. Um, but just so everyone's aware, I mean, that's what we're here for today as the commission. We're here to uphold or deny a, a 50 citation. So anything above that, I feel is, you know, being involved with this commission a long time is, is really above and beyond what, what would be expected here today. So, okay. So, Mr. Simmons, if you'd like to, again, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Commissioner. Um, Mr. Plant, you did you have an opportunity to speak to Debbie Winkler. She's the behaviorist that contacted you by telephone. Yes. Okay. So she was engaged by my clients to, for recommendations to evaluate the situation to make sure that something like this didn't happen again. So that's where these recommendations came from. And as I told the commission earlier, I know that you probably picked up on some of this stuff because you just, you were, you had a call late. Um was that we did provide um, documentation to the commission showing the safeguards that have been put in place, the backyard area where the dog could 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 roam and could have some free time and could live its life and be be segregated from the community so there were no problems, and that the the back gate that was that's now permanently padlocked so they can't be accidentally opened by a, a, a child or a trespasser or somebody who just didn't know where they were going, and then the, there's an interior fence there around that gate that would have to be overcome before the dog would get out the gate if the gate ever was open. And I don't know if you heard about it or not, but the interior of the house now has been retrofitted with some interior gates around some of the exits to the garage where there would have to be, um, the dog would have to get through the interior gate. And then after that would have to get through the garage door. And then after that would have to get through the exterior garage door before it would be, it would have access to that public, um, or the common areas. And the same thing has been done around the front door too, where the, um, there's an interior gate, the front door, and then on the porch in front of the house, there's an enclosure where there's a gate there that prevents the dog from getting out into that common area, um, at, 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 at through the front of the house. And I think that, and Miss, Miss Williams, we've, we've all, I think what we heard here described today by Mr. Plant was that last incident was your two dogs, when the when the, when when Tolga got loose from the collar that the young man had 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 got him by the collar, but Tolga managed to squirm out of it. Okay, so the commission has an idea that this is where this is one continuous stream of events. And then, as you heard, my client got involved where the young man came over and got him, and then he tried to get out of the house and and um and uh and and corral the animal at that point in time. Um, they are indeed, and Mr. Plant, I don't know if you heard it or not. They are indeed. I I, I don't know. If, I think Melody did speak with you about how sorry they were about that this yeah. happened and that yeah. um, they didn't, they certainly never wanted any of their neighbors to be hurt or frightened by what we understand okay. that. Okay. The, if you're, if you, if you have any questions for me, please go ahead and ask. And if I've missed anything, I'll be glad to fill in the blanks. No, you, you've covered, covered everything. Yeah. And, and I think they've gone to a very detailed uh, method of, of mm -hmm. protecting the neighborhood and, and, and protecting, you know, the dog from getting out of the house. And I thank them for that. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Mr. Commissioner, we'll submit on that. All right, thank you. I appreciate it. Um, so at this time, we're just going to go ahead and deliberate. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start again. Basically, in this situation, I mean, obviously, they've, you know, the, the McNulty's have gone above and beyond what we would expect them to do for something like this. Um, I do, however, think it's important to keep on the record what, what's happened. Um, so I would recommend either dropping the fine to like a dollar or something like that and, and upholding both because obviously the incident was, you know, they, they're, they're stipulating that the incident happened, it did occur. So that's kind of where I'd be at on something like this. I mean, obviously, I don't want to, they, they've already spent way more money than, you know, than what a $50 citation to do what they needed to do. So um, they've obviously care about their community and um, that's kind of how I feel. So. Um, Officer McFarland, if you have anything to add. Yeah, I concur. We've, uh, they've gone above and beyond. <laughs> so I, uh, I'll follow your lead on this one. And I agree. Um, it's a $50 citation. We've already clearly shown that they've taken this seriously. Yep. Ed. Uh, yeah, uh, I was there, uh, a while ago. Um, the, uh, the dog owners here are, are very responsible. 
apparently it was a wake up call and, and they heard it loud and clear. So um, I, I make it, uh, you know, what we were dealing with here, two $50 citations, lower them to $1 a piece and uh, just so they remain on the record for future. And let's, let's move on. I think the, the neighborhood is, uh, you know, is, is okay now. They have gone above and beyond, uh, in my opinion, without even, uh, like, you, like you noted earlier, Tom, uh, you know, these are just citations, you know, and, and to look at the situation, you would think that they got a, a, a dangerous or potentially dangerous order, and um, they took it upon themselves, and I salute them. Thank you. And um, yes, this, this is, uh, that, that would be uh, exactly, I think, um, what we need to do here. Reduce them a uh, dollar piece, leave them on record, and uh, let's everybody get along. And I do have one suggestion for Ms. Williams. Um, uh, it's just off between you and I. Um, there, there's a, a thing called a thunder shirt uh, that you can get for your dog, and it comforts them. Um, and maybe you could try that and ease, them, go and ease your dogs back to going outside. Um, I've seen it work. It's a wonderful, it's a wonderful, uh, a thing, a thunder shirt. So that's just for you. Thanks, Ed. Thank you. Jennifer, you're muted. Sorry. I didn't realize you were waiting on me because I'm not sure I could really add anything after all that. I think these pet owners have been just amazing, um, in stepping up like that. I wish in so many more of our cases that we had folks that would go to these lengths. Um, and just as an aside, this is my first encounter with a Saudi sand dog. Um, I'm actually going to go look that up, learn a little bit more about them after today's hearing. Cool. Matthew. Yeah, I don't, I don't have anything to add. I think we're all in agreement. I've been, I've been there for a while, reduce it to a dollar just so we have a record of it, but they've already gone above and beyond what we would expect for this kind of citation. All right, well, then I'll just take a motion to that effect. If anyone ready to do that. I move that we um, uphold both citations, that we reduce the fine for each one to a dollar. And I will second that. Perfect. All right, all in favor. All right, thank you. And thank you, thank guys. You, commissioners. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have one more, Phil? Yes, sir. Let me call that here. Does anybody so, need a quick break before we do this? Or you guys want to just get it get her done? Five minutes? Anybody need five minutes? No? Everybody good? All right, let's get it done then. Yeah. So our last case, we have Craig Lucy versus Christopher Burnham for the affidavit of complaint for an animal running at large dog named Boone. All parties who have an interest in this case who wish to testify may now come forward to take the oath. Please utilize Zoom's raise hand feature. I'll get you added in one at a time and then sworn in all together at the end. Let's see here. Got both individuals, thankfully. Bring them up. There we are. Mr. Lucy, can you hear me? I can. If you would please state your name and address for the record. Uh, Craig Lucy, 1812 Skippers Row, Gibson Island, Maryland. Thank you kindly. Hang on for just one second. And Mr. Burnham, if you could please unmute and start up your video. There we go. Can you hear me, sir? I can. Can you hear me? And, yes, sir. If you would please state your name and address for the record. My name is Christopher Burnham, and I live at uh, 319 South Lee Street, Alexandria, Virginia. That's my legal residence. Thank you, Kylie. And if you both would please raise your right hand. Do you declare and affirm under the penalties of perjury the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. I do. Thank you, Kylie. Um, normally, we would be good to proceed. Mr. Burnham, are you still intending to request postponement? 
Uh, I'm, pre I'm prepared to proceed this morning. All right, thank you kindly. If you would both please remain muted and let's call upon to speak and we are good to proceed. Okay, Mr. Lucy, uh, you brought this citation. Could you please uh, tell the commission why? Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, on October 17th, about 5.34, uh, um, I was riding my mountain bike on Gibson Island. Um, I was coming up to <clears throat> an area that has baseball lacrosse fields on the left um, on a road called Broadwater Way. Um, and it comes right to a fork where you can either go straight on St. Giles Street um, or go on Broadwater Way. Uh, as I came up to that fork, um, and I was intending to go on Broadwater Way, um, a chocolate lab ran across Broadwater Way, um, continued running across St. Giles Street. I stopped my bike literally in front of the sign that has Broadwater Way and St. Giles Street. Um, I, uh, my wife had been hurt in 2000 um, by a lab who took her out on her bike from the hospital. Um, and so I, had my iPhone there. I turned my iPhone on as this dog was now off to my right across Broadwater, St. Giles, now off to my right. And the dog is being pursued. Um, and I didn't know who it was at the time. I uh, since found out it was Mr. Burnham um, by a person in a golf cart. Um, so I continued filming the dog. Um, the dog was about, you know, was running back and forth. Um, but the dog was about um, 75 to 100 yards from me being, being pursued by Mr. Burnham. Um, the dog came running toward me, um, almost got hit by a golf cart um, coming on St. Giles. This is all on video, which I've sent to Officer Hall. Um, dog almost got hit by a, um, uh, didn't stop. A uh, golf cart went by, the dog came over to me, uh, began sniffing my leg. Um, the gentleman who I did not know who was Mr. Burnham, um, came up to me, uh, and uh, as the video uh, states, um, I told him as he started to speak that I was recording this, um, and uh, he asked me if I was going to use this video against him in the future, um, and I just told him that um, um, his dog running off is illegal. Um, he said, it's not illegal if you're in control of your dog, um, and I said, no, no. Uh, on a leash under your control. Uh, he said, no, that's not the rules in Interland County. Um, and I said, no, uh, it's the law for 30 years in Interland County. He said, okay. Um, I said, on a leash under your control. I, so I'd really appreciate, um, I really wish actually, if you'd put your dog on a leash. Mr. Burnham said, okay. Um, I said, the dog ran up to me, not in your control. Uh, he said, it did not. Um, I said, you know, you did not ask him to do that. He said, the dog did not get anywhere near you, Craig. Um, I said, he ran right up to me. He said, he did not. At that point, the dog got in the golf cart and Mr. Burnham did then have control, um, of him, uh, and under, uh, on a leash basically because he grabbed his collar, uh, and he drove away. Um, uh, since that incident occurred, another incident occurred, uh, Gibson Island as a homeowners association, uh, has passed new dog rules, uh, that have seven areas, this being one of them. Um, that they say that dogs um, can roam off leash at large um, and they're secured, these new rules say, because of um, the geography, uh, topography, and natural features. Um, there are no natural features. I have provided evidence to uh, Officer um, Hall and Officer Simpson that it's road to grass to road. There's, there are no natural features. Um, and again, uh, Sunday morning, it was very cold Saturday, didn't go riding for very long, but seven minutes into my ride on Sunday morning, more dogs uh, off leashes, uh, running down the middle of the road, stopping traffic, stopping cars. Uh, it's, uh, it's a real problem and it's become much more of a problem um, when um, you know, people like Mr. Burnham testify at this um, HOA dog hearing that the entire island should be um, uh, a uh, dog sanctuary um, and dog park. Um, look, we have three dogs. We've had many, many dogs. Um, we walk our dogs on a leash. We have an electric fence. Uh, we're very cautious. Electric fences can fail. Um, but again, my wife's been put in the hospital um, by someone walking their dog, seemingly fine, 
ran up and took out her her uh, her front wheel, taking away in an ambulance. Um, so uh, you know the rules and laws that exist um, for Anne County and in Gibson Island is in Anne Arundel County, um, and um, you know they're just going the wrong direction on this, just making a bad situation much worse. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Lucy. Uh, Phil, do we have the video? Yes, sir, I can get that up for you here. Uh, let's see. Got it here. Share for which folder here? This thing too, share system audio. I hope this comes through. Okay, yeah, the zoom's a little funny. Against me someday. Come here. Come here, Boone. I'm recording this. I know you Obviously, are. that's illegal. It's not illegal if you're in control of your dog. No. On a leash and under control. No, nope, that's not the rule. That in, is the law. In 30 years County. in Arundel County. Okay. Under, on a leash and under your control. I'm running a bike. My wife was almost killed when we first got the island because of that. So, I really wish you'd put your dog on a leash. Okay. Dog ran up to me, not in your control. Yeah, he you didn't, didn't ask. Me to All right, I, we, I think we've seen what we need to see. Uh, there's you know, the interaction there is kind of without precedent. There, we're, we're here about the dog being um, at large, so I don't think we need to go further with that conversation. Um, Mr. Burnham, you're here um, to defend yourself in this situation. Please go ahead. Uh, I am. The so, uh, Commissioner Berger, are you? Uh, are you uh, stating then before my my uh, statement that uh, you have confirmed that that dog was off leash and, and not under my control? Uh, well, what I saw is the dog was definitely off leash and to my eye seemed to be on, uh, not under control. I don't know if the dog was on your property or anything like that. So uh, there'll be questions to be asked. I'm not saying I've made up my mind any which way. Um, well, I think I'm gonna have to ask for a continuance because uh, Craig has now uh, misspoken twice first of all he stated that he stopped his bike because the dog crossed over the road in front of him you can see from the video i was uh, and i measured it this morning even though craig drove by and started filming me yet again measuring the distance between where he was standing and where i was in the woods exercising my dog and training my dog in the woods which i do routinely the the, and the continuance is, is that he said that the dog ran in front of him, which is why he stopped his bike. That's an outright, utter fabrication. The second thing is, is that he states that the reason why he is so uh, hyper-focused on this, other than in his attempt to weaponize uh, this issue on this island, because he has a lawsuit against the corporation on this island uh, that's ongoing, for which we have already spent $1.4 million as a corporation defending this this island against Craig's uh, lawsuit. Nevertheless, as he tries to weaponize this, not only in terms of the, the video of me, but the video of four or five others that he has posted on YouTube within the last few months, the, he also continues to state that his wife almost died. And in this case, he now said that when a lab ran in front. That, that 20 years ago, that has also been disputed. There are affidavits in the works to dispute that. And I think that needs to be adjudicated in a court of law. And let's find out under oath where those facts are regarding that. Third, I was in the woods by my measurement, 300 feet away from the location where Craig stopped his bicycle. When I saw a man raise something up, didn't know what it was that he had in his hand pointed at me. Uh, and and I decided to begin to investigate, which is why, as you can see in that video, I drove my, my uh, uh, golf cart around. In other words, 
I was lawfully, by the rules of this county, by the rules of the Gibson Island Club and the Gibson Island Corporation, exercising my right to, to, to exercise and, and train my dog in a location that has always been on this island, a dog uh, uh, training and recreation area, and now is officially that as filed with the Anne Arundel County uh, General Counsel. And as such, the, 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 the incident was perpetrated by Craig stopping 300 feet away to film me maintaining my lawful right to train and exercise my dog. But suffice it to say that he has now misspoken, if not fabricated twice, and I think we need to now adjudicate this in a court of law. Um, Mr. Burnham, I have a question, just a quick question though, because I mean, we're only here on a citation for an animal running at large. Um, for today's purposes, uh, we don't have any control or authority over any of the other things you mentioned. We're aware that there is some ongoing litigation out there in Gibson Island, but under Anne Arundel County Code, if the dog is not on a leash and not on your own property, then it is at large. So are you disputing that? Because that's all we can address today. Uh, you, could, you could hear the whistle being blow, blown and my dog uh, came to my side after, uh, after a minute. I have. I do not dispute the fact that he ran over to, to uh, uh, sniff Craig's leg, and then he got on the cart. The and by the way, the other golf cart, which I'm willing to call as witnesses, is by Carrie and and, and Matt Mud, so that they can also attest. First of all, how far I was away as they were coming down St. Giles, and second of all, uh, whether or not, in their opinion, my dog was quote at large and not under my control. Um, sir. It's not a matter of opinion. Um, so I'm a little confused. Maybe we're looking at two different things. The definition of at large under 124101 um, means that um, the dog is off the owner's property and not leashed and under the control of a responsible person. It's not leashed or under the control, it's leashed and. So as long as the dog is not leashed, it's considered at large. Um, so I'm, I'm kind of confused as to what we're disputing here because I don't think there's any dispute that the dog was unleashed and not on your property. Am I, am I wrong on those two pieces? Well, um, thank you, Commissioner. Let me ask you a question. The, uh, do the rules of Anne Arundel County allow a dog to be in a dog designated area off leash but under the whistle control of the owner or representative uh, for the purposes of training and exercise? Yes, as long as certain criteria are met. And uh, ma'am, what are those? What is that criteria, please? Um, I'm sorry, are you asking for informational purposes or are you now interrogating me? <laughs> um, you clearly have the statute in front of you. Um, and from my understanding, and correct me if I'm wrong, that it has now been designated as a dog park, although I think there, that might be up for debate since it, um, it's not enclosed. But regardless, at the time of the citation, was it designated as a dog park? Well, it was in, it was in the rules and regulations of the Gibson Island Club, which have been promulgated for decades here. It's called the Green Pages. And, and uh, okay. due to this and the incidents against Guy Casala, they have now been clarified and codified within a filing before the General Counsel of, of Anne Arundel County. So in my opinion, if you want to hold somebody accountable for this, it should be the Gibson Island Corporation. It should not be me because I abided by the rules on page 70 that have been promulgated for decades here. Does Gibson Island exist in Anne Arundel County, Maryland, sir? It does. And do you, do you believe that Gibson Island's rule book sub, it, it somehow supplants the county rule book? Well, well, the, the, the rules of the county are, and I believe that uh, uh, Commissioner Brianza just mentioned it, that if the dog is in a dog designated area, one, two, under the command or control of the representative or owner, three, exercising or being trained, 
And I can show you a video right now of my dog uh, uh, hunting and, and uh, fe fetching a pheasant and returning. The, that I am, uh, then, then I don't know how you can define that as a dog at large. Hey, Tom, if, if I'm not mistaken, I think we have dealt, dealt with this uh, last month. I mean, it's just, it was a different yeah, it was case. A similar yes, case. Yeah. A, similar, a, similar, a similar case. And I think we came, you know, I, I think it was stated, uh, and I forgot who stated it, that uh, no, no private entity or whatever has the right to supersede Anne Arundel County law. And if, if that is currently pending, uh, I believe we have to go forward with the rules that are already that are in place for this particular citation. So that's, that's Evans, what, what, rules, what rules are are not in place here on the island? Apparently, the leash law. Okay, but stop. I think just as a simple matter, on the date of this alleged incident, even if everything 17. you're saying is correct, Mr. Burnham, um, and this is now a designated dog park, it was not a designated dog park on the date of this alleged citation. Am I correct? Well, no, not according to these green pages. Okay. So I have no idea what you're showing me. Mr. Lucy, one second, please. Again, no, within, within those green pages, does it include the road that your dog was off leash on? May I, uh, Commissioner Berger, may I read them sure. to you now? If you'd like, feel free for sure. But I'd like, I'd like to see the geographical boundary. If you can explain the geographical boundary of what you claim to be the the dog training area. Well, well, in in fact, in fact, these rules apply to the entire island. We have people who walk the island with dogs which never leave their side because they're so well trained. So that's understood. But once again, we're talking about Anne Arundel County law, not the rule book. Now I understand that if you were led to believe that that was the rules based on a rule book, that's fine. But the Anne Arundel County law supersedes that rule. I, I, I get that. I served for six years in the Connecticut House of Representatives and was assistant minority leader. I've made many laws in my day okay. the, the, uh, and voted on many laws. So I don't, I, 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 but, but I think you, you are misinterpreting that. And maybe that's why we need to go to a court of law. But suffice, suffice you know, to, to, to adjudicate that. But suffice it to say that we have multi-decadal rules, and I'll just be brief here, Animals running at large, if not contained on the owner's property, uh, the animal needs to be under the control of the owner or the owner's representative. Whenever someone walking or on a bike or a cart or a car will be getting with 100 feet of you, you must have called your dog to heel and have a leash attached until the person is safely 100 feet beyond you. Please be thoughtful of those around you, et cetera, et cetera. The, so, so, you know, we have this, uh, a, a multi-decadal tradition on this island of, of you know, re being required to leash your dog when someone comes within 100 feet. Craig Lucy was, was 300 feet away from me. When he stopped, raised something in his right hand, had no idea what he was pointing at me. And, and, and just for the record, I felt threatened and I felt threatened this morning, Craig, when you drove by to film me measuring the distance between where you stood in October and where I was when my golf cart training my dog on that October 17th day. So uh, I, I am merely stating that, that you know, what we're getting down to here, commissioners, is what is the definition of under control? It's not, um, but you're missing the whole point. By definition in the statute, it's leashed and under control. If you uh, uh, were in fact a legislator, then you should be very familiar with the distinctions between and and or. Well, it's you can Google leashed. me, ma'am, and I assure you I was a legislator. I mean no disrespect, sir, but it, the law does say leashed and under control, not leashed or. If it was or, I'd be right with you. I get it. It could be one of the two, but it's not an alternative. It's so, cumulative. Except, except for the exclusion of off-leash dog parks. So then the question becomes, was Gibson Island at the time of this incident, was the entire island other than an individual owned property? So we're now talking about the corporation owned property, the private property of the corporation to which the only people who have rights to that property are the shareholders of this, of this corporation. And they have the right and the rules of that are 
that 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 uh, off leash dog parks are as follows. And, and these are the new rules. The common the corporation common area at the east end of St. Giles Road bordering on Broadwater Way. Those have been clarified due to this incident and the Guy Sakala incident. But but let me state that for decades, the entire island of corpor of private corporation property was considered was considered a uh, a uh, uh, off leash dog park. All right, Thank you. Mr. Berman, give me one second here. Mr. Lucy, you've had something you'd like to say. Please. please. Um, th th thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, the uh, rules um, are not, um, they're, they're in a uh, corporation book and they're in a club book. Um, the deeds since 1925, which are the deeds Mr. Burnham bought his house under, which we bought our, bought our houses under, are very clear that occupants of Gibson Island are stockholders in the HOA and occupants. You can be in a house for any reason and their guests. What was done recently to try to say that, that all these rules do not follow in around county law, uh, all these rules are real. They just tried to restate them again and said that rather than, you know, we're gonna have areas that are unsecure and this is what our, um, we're considering dog parks under the code only in Arundel County can designate a dog off leash park. An HOA under the code, and, and um, Ms. Brenda will correct me if I'm wrong, um, says that it must be a secured area. Um, and these areas are not secured. Um, the corporation tried to come in and say, well, we're securing them by geography, topography, and natural features. There are no natural features. I went out this morning to confirm, in fact, that there were no natural features. Mr. Burnham was out there. He waved. I allowed him to walk in front of my car across the road. He got in his golf cart. He traversed just like his dog did back and forth because there are no natural features. It's very dangerous. It was dangerous Sunday morning. Um, again, I've said last time, and I've said when I talked on the 27th to everybody who was trying to codify this, I said, go to the county council. And if you wanna get some sort of special exception for Gibson Island, get that done. But just because Gibson Island's done something or chooses to do something that's dangerous, uh, I, I welcome being in court with my wife's medical records. Dr. Miles Barn was there, president of the club. That's not for this, but it's a dangerous area. Put your dog on a leash, please. Um, keep people and dogs safe. Um, thank you. So, Commissioner. Yes, sir. Chairman, thank you. The, the, I, I guess then, Craig, we now have to litigate what constitutes a natural barrier. There is a natural barrier. It's called being an island. And, and, and you know, as such, the, the, I would consider that. But if you don't consider it that, let's All just right. go to let's, court and we'll let a, uh, a jury of our peers figure that out. All right, we're not going to go back and forth on, on that right now. Okay, we're here about the citation. So at this point, unless there's anything new to add about the specific incident that occurred on 10 17 2021 then you don't need to hear anything more at this point is there anything new to add to that all right in that case we're going to go ahead and deliberate so you know once again i'll begin again you know i saw evidence on the day in question the dog was off leash um not on his property he never claimed it was on his property it was obviously on the street ran up to the man i think it's clear we, we uphold so that's where i'm at anyone else yeah, I think we I think we uphold. I mean, it's clear as day evidence. Okay, everybody's yeah, in agreement. I'll, I'll take a I, motion. I, I I think that that there this is probably going to be an ongoing situation. And in my mind, uh, what I see is, I mean, I have six acres here in Anne Arundel County. I cannot, you know, myself say, you know, everybody bring your dogs here and let them off the leash. You know, and, and it seems like somewhere here, somebody has done that and certain people want to uphold it and other people want to fight it. But what we have in front of us today, yes, I agree with you, Tom. Uh, it needs to be upheld. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I'll take a motion. I think, Mr. I mean, you know, I'll take your question. If you, if you think differently, that's fine. But I got to imagine you're on, you're on board. <laughs> I'm on board. All right. So, I mean, I'll, I'll take, a, I'll take a, a motion at this point to uphold or deny. I make a motion to uphold. Okay. Second. All right. All in favor. 
All right. Paul, is that it for us for today? That is it. Let me get you the. Uh, I actually, you had them up already from from January, correct? The, the minutes to you? The minutes from January. Hey, if I already uh, got them to you, I'll just double check. And well, I think they were on the. Uh, I read them this morning. I believe they were on the. Uh, out the in the uh, share drive, yeah. Oh yeah, perfect. I already got you on there. I'm ahead of it. Yeah, and I've I, I read through. <laughs> you them realize how started. fishy you were. Yeah, and I read through them before I started today. So we're, you know, I've already had a chance to read through those minutes and I agree with them. So um, I'm, you know, I'll take a vote to uphold those minutes from January. Anyone? Oh, you want us to vote or do you need a yeah, motion? Yeah, I need a, I need a, I need a, a motion on that. I make a motion that we approve the minutes as written. Second, okay. second, dude. Okay, it's all in favor. Okay. Uh, so before we adjourn again, I just want to remind everybody next month, you know, I, I don't mind, you know, sharing this right now. You know, my biggest issue is, you know, it may be me one month. It may be one of my, you know, one of the other, you know, Greg or someone else from my department. So we really need to consider a vote for next month. I don't know if we're going to have a veterinarian by next month or any other members, but uh, um, I think we should move forward with that next month. And um, yeah, Officer McFarland, welcome. Like again, thanks again. This was kind of a, I wouldn't say this is a typical Monday. I think it was a little bit here, there, and everywhere, but uh, hopefully you'll you kind of see how this goes and we can move forward. So with that, I'll take a motion to adjourn. And thank you all. I'll make a motion to adjourn. All right. Seconded. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. Have a good week. We'll see you guys next yeah. month. Thank you. Take it easy, guys. Thanks. Thank you all.